How's it going, PD team? I've got a fun tutorial for you today. While this project might seem easy for most of my users, it has a few tricks that you'll definitely not want to miss out on. So why would I make a project like this? Well, it works great for edit transitions. You render out a couple hundred frames and you cut what you want in the transition points of your video edit. While this style has a specific look in this concept, it can be changed while maintaining the technique I'm about to show you. Everyone needs a ribbon generator in their tool set library. This technique used in this project can be used for much more than just ribbons. With that being said, let's dive in. This project is broken up into three main sections. The path generator, which I called ribbon maker, the tracer object, which traces the position of the ribbon maker, and then lastly, the actual geometry. One of the main techniques I'm going to show you is getting the ribbons to render out properly once you merge these because these are swept. There's five sweeps on here. And what happens is when you connect these, you lose the ability to have random colors or segmented colors, separated colors out. So this technique I'm going to show you helps fix that in the redshift renders. So loading up the IPR, you can see we're showing the five colors of this rainbow. If you were to normally generate this, you run into two issues. It doesn't sweep right or the textures don't show. So I got a fix for that. Okay, with that being said, let's build this thing out. Okay, here I'm in a blank project. We're going to start off with by making the position generator. So to do this, there's a few ways you could add a null and use the vibrate tag, but that won't get the results to kind of sweep around in a circular fashion. So to do this, we're going to click the null object, call it ribbon position, and then holding shift, I'm going to click and add a new null and call this position Z. Hold shift again with that selected and do position Y. With this position Y selected, I'm going to change this to a sphere and make it rather large. And so what we want to do is we want to take position Z and pull it out. And then position Y is going to move up and down. And then this guy is going to get rotated like this on the heading. So this is going to rotate randomly on the heading and this is going to slide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right, right click on the position Z and go to rigging tags protection. I've got a shortcut up here and I'm going to uncheck Z. I'm going to add another one to Y and uncheck Y. So we're locking the position so that way we don't mess up our rig. And then this one, we're going to add a rotation on the heading. So we can try this out. You can see heading works, Z works, and none of the other properties work. So there's our simple rig. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to use the all new fields to animate this. So I'm going to start off with position Z, right click, animation tags, and do field driver. So with our field driver, we want to animate the position Z, right? So I'm going to right click on position Z and go to field driver add. In our properties, we're going to put negative 400 to negative 500. And we're going to adjust these values in a little bit. So this is just moving forward and backwards 100. Let's do negative 200. There we go. And then next, what we want to do is we'll go to our fields section and add a random field. Now, to get this to work properly, you need to place it inside of the position Z. This is important. I'm going to zero out the position. I'm going to turn off it in the viewport. So if you don't place this in the object that it's that it's moving, you run into some issues. It'll kind of glitch out. So we'll set our animation speed to something like 50 and I'll set this hot scale to 1000 and I'll put the random seed to one. Let's crank up the speed and there we go. So you can see it's randomly moving in the Z depth. Let's try the seed, the size. There we go. Okay, so it's moving in and out, perfect. Let's get this to spin around. So I'm gonna go to the ribbon position, right click, same thing, I'll go to animation, field driver, and we'll click on the ribbon position here and we're gonna do the heading. So right click on the heading, field driver, add, go to the field driver, go to parameters. I'm gonna do negative 360 and positive 360. Go to the fields tab, click the random field, and we'll need to add this into the group here. Set the speed and we'll set this to zero. So our rotation noise is set to zero and this random seed is set to one. And we'll do seed on Y, we'll set to two. So they're each individual. So I'll go ahead and play this, turn off the visibility, and there you go. So that looks pretty good. So next what we'll do is we'll go to position Y, right click, animation tags, field driver, go to the position coordinates, and we're gonna be doing the Y. So we'll go to Y here, field driver, add, select the tab, go to properties and we'll do negative 200 tab positive 200 and we can always adjust these later go to the field tab add another random effector we want to add this as a child set this set the random seed to, to two and the scale 500 hit play and that feels good so let's go ahead and check our work so I'll stop this and to get the path tracer to work what you need to do is you need to select position Y go to your cloner section hold it down and click tracer and we'll leave it on trace paths and we'll go from end and we'll do something like 45 frames there we go so next what we'll do is we'll add a camera into our scene and I'm going to zero out the position on the X, Y and bring this to a thousand for now. Now look through the camera and when I do ribbons I like to bring out the focal length to make it really wide so the 
motion is exaggerated. So I'm gonna go here and type in 16 and then bring this in and see what we've got. Turn off our noise here, bring in the camera just a little bit more. That feels good. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock my camera. So add a protection tag, drag it to the bottom and we're done with the position, the ribbon positioning tool. So let's go ahead and make the actual ribbon itself. So to do that, We'll go out of our camera here and I'm gonna use a rectangle. I'll set this to 25 and six and we can adjust these values later. So this is a good jumping off spot. Next, what I'll do is I'm going to extrude it. I'm gonna turn on edges and then I'm gonna bring the extension down to a thousand and I'm gonna set this to 400. So we get a bunch of segments. So this is our stick that's gonna be our ribbon. We're gonna repeat these. So call it ribbon, call this profile. And with the ribbon selected, we're gonna go and add a cloner and we'll set it to linear. And we wanna zero this out and have it 25 units separated and we'll bring this up to five that looks good we'll go to our profile here and we'll add rounding and we can bring this down to like one so we get a little bit of a gap so that feels right so what we're going to do is we want to make this sweep along the path that we're generating so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add i'll click the null call this ribbon and in this group what we want to do is we want to add a deformer called the spline wrap and the spline wrap works great but you get weird results when you try to do it to a cloner so i'll show you what the result will be so so we'll add our tracer in into our spline and it does this so we need to change the direction because we're in the z because our object is going in the z direction you can see it's facing z it's going the length so we click z and you get a weird result so to fix this what we need to do is we need to add this cloner to a connect object so what i'll do is i'll go to connect and hold down alt and add it to a group and then when we update you can see it works now now this using this connect will give us errors when we use it with the redshift shader getting these bands in different colors so i'll show you a fix for that so I'm gonna go ahead and disable and it still works, which is really cool. So the next thing you can see, we get some weird twisting action happening. So to fix that, we'll go here. You can see when I play it, it does weird twists. So to fix that, what we can do is we can add an arch, put it on the flat plane here and bring this to like 350. And then in our spline wrap, we can set the rail to this. And I like taking the arch and rotating it. So it's facing backwards like here. And then what you can do is you can move this up and down to get the right angle. So I'm gonna drag it down so that the ribbon is kind of facing upwards a little bit like that. Now our tracer object needs some adjustment. You can see we're getting some polygons happening here so if I turn off the edge mode you can see we're getting clear subdivision issues so to fix that in our tracer go to the object tab and we can actually change this from linear to something like B spline and then set this to uniform then we don't need so many segments and bring it down to like four just so it smooths it out so I'll go one click two clicks also you can see some polygonal geometry here that's with the subdivisions so what you can do is when your time when it's time to render you go to your ribbon here and you crank this value up to like a thousand and it'll smooth it out now this ribbon will animate quickly so you won't won't see these polygons it renders out fine so I'm gonna lower it so it plays back faster and we can see what we got so far now I want this to taper off at the end so what I'll do is I'm gonna go to the ribbon here on the spline wrap and go to size and bring this down like this but you'll notice there's some curves so I'm gonna just right click spline preset and say linear and there we go now if yours is folding on itself like here what you can do is you can go to your position noise on the Y and bring the speed up so it changes directions quicker like so and remember you're not using the whole thing you're gonna be using it as a transition so area Areas where it kind of kinks and it looks weird you can always just edit that out like there like in that spot so you're not using this whole thing so what I'll usually do is I'll render out 640 frames so I have a long timeline and I can just pick and choose which sections I like I also purposefully render it out a little bit slower like at this speed and speed it up when I'm video editing the render times on this are really quick so it, you don't have to worry about lost frames rendering stuff that you're not going to use controlling the ribbons position rotation you select this one Z is this one and the Y is this one so you have them separated in individual fields which is very useful so what I want to do is I want to set up a controller with a little bit of espresso programming where we can scale the size of these and the separation dimensions and all that good stuff so you might want to control this make it thicker or thinner so what you do right click on the ribbon go to programming tags go to espresso and we're gonna control the ribbon size so you drag this in and we're gonna drag in our ribbon null which is gonna have the espresso controls on it so go to the profile and we're gonna copy the width and the height parameters so shift select right click user interface copy user interface then go to the ribbon null and go here to paste user data brings up this dialog we'll add a new group I'll call it ribbon hit enter drag in your height and your width like that hit okay and now you can see we have a tab here for the two controls so I'm gonna set the width back to 25 and the height to 6 then we'll drag the width in to our output of our node drag the height in to the output of the node I like
like zooming in a little bit. So we'll take our profiles, drag those in, our height, drag this in, and drag this in here. And this one's super simple, but if we change the height of this, let's try it out. So if I make it skinnier, you can see we have a gap in our group. So what we want to do is we want to control this cloner and affect its distance. So we want to be able to do this and bring it in. So what we'll do, so we'll go back to our Expresso, bring in the cloner, and what we want to affect is the cloner's X distance. Now, I might want to control and have a gap and control that. So we'll be adding to this. So what I'm going to do in between this, so I'm going to go to Expresso, calculate and do math. And I'm going to take the width, plug it into the input of the math node, and then bring this into here. And now what's cool is we have a gap that we can set. So this is like two units, three minute units, five. So I'll set it to 10 just so you can see the gap. And we'll go back to our ribbon controller, set this back to 25. And you can see it maintains that gap. So on my example, I set the gap to one. So what we can do is we can right click, user interface, copy user interface, go to the ribbon, paste user interface, and I'll call this gap, hit enter. Now with this gap, I want the limit to be zero and the max to be like something like 10. And the width on this, we'll set to zero and we'll say the width maximum of 100. The height, we'll do maximum of one and set this to something like 25. And we'll set this minimum to one as well. So there we go. So if you want a gap slider, you just go here to manage user data and go float, float slider. Click these. Hit OK. And now you can see we have a gap slider. So we'll go to our ribbon, drag the gap, and plug this in. So now you can see it updates. So there's the gap. We can try out the width and thickness. Whoa, 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 hold on a second. So you made it this far. Clearly, you're enjoying the content. Would you consider clicking the thanks button on this video to help grow the channel's community so I can make more great content just for you? Any amount is greatly appreciated. If money is tight right now, then do me a favor and just smash that like button immediately. Now, to the video. Next, we're gonna build out the shader for this. So the shader is incredibly easy, requires a little bit of node programming. So let's go ahead and build it, double click, call this ribbon, double click the shader. We don't need the attributes panel, so I'm gonna Alt, Control click hamburger and what we want to do is we want to basically because we're using the MoGraph cloner we have access to each of these bands and their index value so this is zero this is one this is two this is three this is four so what that allows us to do is do a user data where we can access that so I'm going to double click type in user data and we're going to use integer user data because we're going to select the number and then we're going to select here under MoGraph object ID so that adds the shortcut for that next what we want to do is we want to add a layer so I'm going to double click under utility if you scroll down, there's called a shader switch. So double click that. We don't need these inputs. Now you can make your a rig where you do the shader colors is like user selectable. I'm not going to do that. There's other videos I've covered that show how to do that. So we're going to take our user data and plug it into the shader selector. And then we're going to go to out color. And then what we can do is we can make red, orange, yellow, green, and purple. And these are colors from Skittles, by the way, if you're wondering why I'm picking these colors. So now if I go here and apply the texture to our cloner, turn on IPR, you can see it works. And one thing that you're going to notice that's a fix is I'm not using this connect object. If I was to have this connect object enabled, the texture won't work. So you might be thinking, oh, well, I can just undo weld and undo texture. That doesn't work. So when I use the connect object for a cloner that uses a material with multiple user datas plugged into it, I will turn off the connect object and it works kind of like a null. Now there's two objects that you can use, the connect object. You can also use the subdivision as well with it disabled. It works the same way. So there you go. Now one last finishing touch that I did on this material was I added uh, sparkles so you can double click and type in flakes. So to get the flakes to work, we would use a bump map, plug in the normal into here, plug this into the bump channel and bring this down to like 0.25. And we're going to change it from height field to tangent space, which is normal maps. And then we're also going to use the flakes ID, which is a black and white value. So I'm going to do a change range and I'm going to use a number change range. You don't need the inputs here. So I'm going to select and hit delete. I'm going to select the output of the flakes ID into the input and I'm going to bring it into the roughness channel. And then we'll see what we get. Now I don't have any lights in the scene, but you can kind of see there's the sparkles appearing. If you look at my texture for my example that I built out of this ribbon maker, I plugged in the user data shader switch color fields into the emission as well. So I have a HDR that's lighting the scene that's giving me hard shadows. So what I did is I loaded up the shader switch into the emission and brought the shader value on the emission channel up to like 0.4. You can use your own values, but this kind of self illuminates and gives it kind of a vibrant look. I also did the 
change range from the flakes in the roughness and also in the sheen. What sheen does is it gives us a reflection on the edges that are facing away from the camera like a Fresnel. And I plugged in that flake into the roughness as that as well. With the reflection roughness, flakes gives you this main highlight. And then I added it using sheen as well. So the areas that pull back into space give the reflection a nice look as well. My biggest takeaway with this project is that you can use the connect object where it's disabled to merge a cloner where you have a shader switch in it. So it's kind of like a dummy connect and your textures still work. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you found this useful. Thanks so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more content. Thanks for your support. Thank <laughs> you.